Perth is the sunniest capital in Australia. Every day we have on average 8.8 .8 hours of sunshine. While today is not one of those days, the conversation around rooftop solar panels is a hot one. Here to answer some questions now, Tyler Jackman, a solar panel expert. Thank you for joining us, Tyler. Hi, Monica. Thanks for having me on the show. We're going to go straight to viewer questions today because we have quite a few of them. Lenise Carruthers asks, how much would it cost to become off the grid with solar panels, inverter and battery? That's a really good question. So to become off grid is quite difficult to actually disconnect. However, to become less reliant on the grid, we're looking at definitely a solar and battery system. These can range anywhere from 15 up to $25,000. Um, or a Pleco, the way that we have it, is a weekly fee. Right, so up to $25,000 for, for the system and for, the battery? For the complete system, yeah. For solar panels, inverter and a battery. It's not a cheap option, is it? Not when it's up front. David Freeman wants to know, what's the lifespan of solar panels and batteries? So with the solar battery systems, we're looking at 15 plus years. Um, the really important thing is to make sure those systems are looked after during their lifespan and, and being able to get the most out of the system with that service and maintenance. David also wants to know, can the solar panels withstand a hailstorm? That is a good... So all the solar panels in Australia, Australian standards, they do have to be able to withstand a hailstorm with hailstones up to the size of about a golf ball. But something that we advise all of our customers is to get your solar and battery system put on your home and contents insurance just for peace of mind. So it would be covered under that insurance, would it? Correct. Arthur Blewett reckons complete waste of money in today's market, three cents feedback rate, but pay nearly 30 cents to buy it back. And yes, I do have solar, I had it for 12 years. Arthur, I agree with you. So the way, I guess, the gravy train that was feed-in tariffs 10 years ago, that really supported a system where you got paid a lot of money to not use your solar and send it back into the grid and get paid a large feed-in tariff. What we've seen is that feed-in tariff has dropped over the years and if you're looking to get the best return out of your system, it's not to send it back to the grid. It's all about producing it, having a battery system and storing it and being, to use, being able to use it over night time so you're not drawing that 30 cents from the grid all night long. With regards to that, we operate differently to other states, don't we? So we have we have different tariffs um, on the eastern states. There's a lot of different, a lot of different retailers, a lot of different feed-in tariffs. Currently in Western Australia, we only have one feed-in tariff that's available to any new cust customers that sign up to solar. So you're looking at about 2.5 cents up until 3 p.m. and 10 cents after 3 p.m. Darren Payne says they're only good if you're at home during the day using the power while you're producing it. Correct. With a standard solar inverter system, it is very much time of use. So if you're not home to use it, it just goes back to the grid. And we've already touched on how little you get paid for that. So that's where that battery comes in, suddenly gives you the control to store it and use it at night time when you're home from work or school. Carly May Nichols writes, I don't see the point in getting it until I can also afford a proper long-term battery storage solution. Correct. If you're looking at that upfront investment of fifteen dollars to $25,000, it's very difficult. Um, that's why we've made it affordable at Pleco with being able to get it on a weekly fee with low upfront costs. And you can start seeing that savings instantly. We do have a calculator on our website. You can jump on there. You can check it out. It will give you your potential savings. Well, that would be handy. Leanne Farrell says, I have 24 solar panels. Why do I only hit $40 credit on my power bill? There are a lot of variables that I don't know about. I'm not sure if there's shading involved or how, how old that system is and how well it's working. But touching back on that feed-in tariff, if it's just going back into the grid, 2.5 cents, you're not going to see a huge amount of return. You're better off using that power within your home, storing it for later, using it at night time. Don't, don't draw it from the grid. That's the best way to save. Tyler, you're doing a terrific job because we do have a lot of questions. <laughs> Kevin Kilmsley asks, what happens to them when they become redundant? The good news is the components in solar panels, 95% of them are recyclable. So we will see a huge uptake in that recycling industry as well as we see the amount of solar panel installations in Australia increase, which is exciting. Leanne Roche asks, what is the cost of just the battery in Australia? Look, it, it all depends on the size. Usually it's on kilowatt hours, um, definitely the brands. Yeah, it's, it's very variable. 
And finally, this one from Sarah Byrne. I would like to know about wind turbines. I already have solar, but it's not enough. There's so much wind here in Perth, and we live semi-rural, but I can't find anyone who does wind turbines. That is a good question. I'm certainly not the person to talk about wind turbines. Maybe you get someone on the show tomorrow. <laughs> well, you've answered all the solar panel questions very well. Tyler Jackman, thank you very much for joining us. Thanks for having me, Monica. Have a good night.